People often think that it's an easy one, two, three. You just put two dogs together and that's how you really create, you know, the best ideal dogs when it comes to breeding. But it really needs to be calculated. It needs to be very thought out, thoroughly thought out. And that's the only way you're going to get the best breedings. So today I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to talk to you guys about how I put together breedings to get the look that I want, to achieve the results that I want out of my breedings. Um, so stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss this episode of Breeders Hacks. All right, guys. What's going on, Bully Fam? It's your boy, the educator, the scientist, Mr. Double Muscle Line Bulls. Um, me and my wife were outside and we were looking at some of the dogs and we were talking about lining up certain breedings and what we look for, how we do it, and essentially the thought process that goes behind it. So, you know what? I got an idea. Come, come inside. I want to show them the analogy that my mentor gave me when it came to putting together some of these breedings, especially for bullies. I think you can apply these principles to other breeds, um, but particularly, with bullies, there's a balance that you're always gonna be juggling with, which is terrier type and like bulldog type. More terrier type features is like more pit bull like features, more longer muzzles, um, longer legs, straighter feet, you know, cleaner bone versus bulldog is gonna have the more smashed muzzle, the more wider rib cage, the more bone, things like that. So we're always consistently juggling between the two types. And um, you're, you're really essentially trying to get that balance. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So, <laughs> so I hope this is a good analogy. Yeah, this will work. So this is how he explained it to me, right? And I'm explaining it to you guys the same exact way. So I got three cups here, right? So this cup is gonna represent lemonade, right? It may not be the best color lemonade, but that's okay. This is lemonade. This cup represents lemons. This is straight up lemon juice. See how yellow that is? That's lemon juice. And then this cup here represents water. So when it comes to putting together your ideal dog, the dog that you're looking for, you want lemonade, the perfect in between, right? You could consider the water, the terrier type, and you could consider say the lemons the bulldog type or you know you can make this analogy to different characteristics and traits it all depends on what you're breeding for what i'm just getting at is the ideal dog what we're looking for is a lemonade right that nice in between so when we have lemonade the thing though is especially picture lemonade being the ideal dog the perfect dog that you want right now if you take a female and i see this all the time there's certain breeders who may not take their females into consideration and this being their ideal dog, you know, top stud that's out right now, looks beautiful. You know, he's that perfect in between and they're gonna take their water, their watered down female. And what happens when you add water to the lemonade? You're going to have watered down lemonade. That's the problem. So you could breed to the ideal stud and what will happen is if your female isn't complimenting him, if you're not taking a female that has, you know, it, that is lemonade, right? Similar in, in characteristics to what you're after. And it has, it has been line bred or inbred with those traits. Well, you're taking water to lemonade and you're going to get watered down lemonade. Now let's use another scenario. And this is actually a scenario that happened to me, right? So we don't have lemonade yet, right? I was stuck between two dogs. So I'm gonna give you guys the whole story real quick and hopefully maybe this is helpful. I was stuck between a dog named Badger and I was stuck between a dog named Crossbones. Badger to me, how he looked, he was lemonade. I mean like, he looked, I, I love the way this dog looked. I truly wanted to have this dog, I wanted to breed to him. I had the opportunity to buy him at one point in time. I absolutely love this dog, right? When I saw him in person, I was absolutely amazed. The only thing though, was that my female was more watered down. She wasn't going to compliment him. She, I wasn't gonna be able to outproduce him because of the fact that she was watered down. Um, 
But there was another dog that was there that I had the potential to use, which was crossbones. And crossbones was more lemons. So now this is lemons. Lemons is much stronger than your lemonade, right? Meaning he had more of the bulldog features, heavier bulldog features than lemonade. Maybe even more than I particularly wanted for myself, right? And I see this happen yet again all the time. So what I did was I took my female who was water and even though I wanted badger, I felt like, you know what? I could get a badger, but I'm gonna need something more potent and more stronger than what badger could offer me because of the fact that I need more lemons. I need more lemons to my water to get lemonade. If I take my water to lemonade, I'm just gonna get watered down lemonade. So what did I do? I took my watered down female, much more cleaner female, Crossbones was a lot more overdone, um, but I said, you know what? I can produce dogs like Badger um, if I go this route based off of you know the recipe that my mentor was basically showing me. So what did I do? I took my water, took it to my lemons, and I got lemonade. It's not the same color because I'm using two different juices, but you guys get the analogy. This was this was this was lemonade. I produced dogs just like Badger exactly what I was looking for. And I didn't breed to the dog because I knew that my female was water and she was not going to compliment him because he was already lemonade. I needed to go straight to, le I needed to go straight to lemons. So I took my water, took it to my lemons and I got lemonade. So that's like a good example of when you're blending different characteristics and traits. Like I said, uh, my female was so watered down with pit bull type features that what I had to do was go to a dog that was so overdone in the bulldog type features that it was gonna give me that healthy in between. I see so many people who are afraid to breed to more bulldog type dogs because they're worried that they're gonna get that bulldog type of dog, not realizing that, I mean, I personally firsthand have seen pit bulls bred to bulldogs and all the puppies still look like pit bulls. The bulldog traits aren't as strong as people think. I think in my opinion, the pit bull traits are stronger. That water, that's harder to get, that's harder to get rid of because of the fact that you're fighting essentially evolution. These dogs are supposed to look more pit bull terrier type than bulldog, you know? So in my opinion, if you have a dog that's already watered down, then you need to take it to as much lemons as possible just to try to get that le lemonade. If you go to straight to lemonade, and I was talking to a young gentleman about this the other day, he took his dog, she was a little bit more watered down, took her to a dog that was lemonade, and sure enough, he got watered down lemonade. He got dogs that did not look anywhere close as nice as the father. Now, don't get me wrong, there's always anomalies. There's always dogs that maybe come out and the father does outproduce himself, but the exception to the rule doesn't make the rule, so I wouldn't be counting on that. I'm going over general overall, and this is what I've witnessed and have seen firsthand in the past decade of dog breeding. So, like I said, there was that dog badger. I loved him. I wanted that look so bad. But I knew that Crossbones was bred similar, similar to badger, but with even more lemons inside of him. He was he had even more lemons. He was more concentrated of the bulldog type features. So when I bred to him, even though my even though my female was completely watered down. He was so concentrated in the lemons, I got lemonade. And those were some of the best dogs I produced. So that's just something that I would, I would recommend. I hope this analogy makes sense. I hope it's helpful. Um, I'm just trying to think of some other things that I can mention real quick when it comes to putting together dogs. I mean, some other things that you want to look for is like, you know, line breeding and inbreeding. Dogs that are more tightly bred are more than likely gonna give you better results because of the fact that their pedigree isn't scattered. So you're not gonna be pulling genetics from all kinds of different dogs. It's more tightly bred, it's a group of family of dogs. I mean, that's all purebred dogs are, are, are a tightly bred family of dogs that have similar characteristics and traits. So that's all you're looking for, um, is, is dogs in a particular bloodline that have similar characteristics and traits and that are bred more closely together, you know? 
So, um, especially, I mean, like some people feel finicky about inbreeding, but definitely, I mean, you at least want some stuff that's line bred. So then the other thing too, is you can get the person who says, well, no, I just want to keep my water down female and I want to breed her to, lem to lemonade. I want to breed to lemonade. And like I said, that's what sometimes people get caught up on is they want to breed to the dog that looks exactly what they want. Not realizing that sometimes they can breed to a dog who's a little bit more overdone than what they want and realizing that they'll get that in between. You know, sometimes by breeding to that overdone dog doesn't mean that you're gonna get that overdone dog. You have to take your female into consideration. So there will be those people who say, well, I just wanna breed to lemonade. I just wanna go, I, I just wanna breed to the dog that I like. And you could, but there's a few things that you would need to take into consideration. And I'm taking a very long and elaborate conversation and trying to condense it into a, just a few minute video. This may have to be multiple parts. But another example is say that the gentleman has water and the dog he wants to breed to is lemonade. Ideal, perfect dog, exactly what he's looking for. Maybe not super concentrated because the dog uh, has a little bit of outcrosses or whatever the case it may be. So what you would need to do, instead of making the mistake of doing one breeding, you would need to take that breeding, take the kids, breed back probably to the father um, or the uncle or something like that. And you would basically just, to, you would need to line breed or inbreed so that then you can convert that water into lemonade. Now, I'm obviously gonna need more lemonade to add to this to make it actual lemonade and dilute that water out. But it's, I'm just trying to give you an example of if you're going to take that watered down female and bring it to lemonade, then you're gonna, you're doing it, in my opinion, it's harder, but you're doing a lot more work because you're gonna have to keep breeding back to it. So you've got the stud that you really like and maybe you're overlooking on a stud that's more concentrated in the features that your female needs. That's the other thing. You, you can't get fixated on the stud and what he looks like. You also have to look at your female. So what I would say is, okay, you take your female, she's water, he's lemonade. Obviously he's not lemons, he's lemonade. So he's not going to produce the best because she's watering him down. So you take those puppies that are water lemonade, you take them back to the father or to the uncle, whatever kind of line breeding you would prefer to do, and you'll get more closer. Now you'll get slightly less watered down lemonade, and you would have to keep continuing to line breed or inbreed to get it to lemonade. So that it, it is possible, but it's gonna take generations. It's not something you're gonna do for your first breeding. So that's as simple as I can make it. Now there's gonna be differences when it comes down to now, say you maybe have a female that doesn't look the greatest, maybe she's water on the outside, but if she's tightly bred lemons, you can best believe that she's gonna produce you lemons. So now that's when you take it to the next step, right? You take a female who's line bred or inbred on some great genetics, um, and she's just not the best looker. In my opinion, I would consider her lemon because I know the second I breed her to lemonade, I'm gonna get some nice stuff. So for me, I've always dabbled on the side of, I'd rather get lemons and I could easily water it down than to deal with water and trying to get lemonade out of water and lemonade, if that makes sense. I'd rather use lemons and I could always water it down. That's always easier to do in my opinion, but it's harder to get, keep the lemons in there because essentially, like I said, we're fighting evolution. So um, with that being said, like I said, those are some other things. You wanna look at the pedigrees. Pedigrees are very important. How is the dog bred? What's the family of dogs that this dog is? And, and look at those combinations that already have been done. People who have done combinations with different bloodlines already and the combinations that they got. If you see that a particular breeder has a bloodline that has started off of this combination, like I'll give you an example. Like I have this bloodline here now of crossbones to local auto stuff and it just always turns out really, really, really nice. So you could always look at other breeders and look at what was their recipe, what was their recipe to success that you could say, okay, my females of this similar blood, I can do a similar breeding and more than likely it'll, you know, do well. It'll probably do as good, uh, similar to what that other breeder's doing with that bloodline. So that's just something to be mindful of. I just, I mean, I hate when I see, you know, breeders that don't take the blood into consideration and just breed two dogs based off of their looks. 
You want to look a little deeper than that. You know, look at their bloodline, look at their lineage, look at who they're off of. Um, and some dogs, if, especially if they're scatterbred, some dogs aren't going to be the best producers. And then some other dogs are going to be um, preponent where they're going to just completely throw themselves in the litters. So if you guys want to see a part two, you know, I could definitely do a part two going further in depth into this, but I just wanted to give you guys a general basic understanding of there's going to be dogs who are lemons, which are super concentrated in a characteristic or a trait that maybe you want. And then there's going to be dogs that are watered down of that trait. And then there's going to be dogs that are in the middle that have the ideal amount that you want. If you have a dog that's watered down, it's better to take it to the lemons in my opinion more concentrated, more, more tightly bred on that look, you know, um, where the lemonade may not produce for you as well. So hope this information was helpful, guys. I hope it was useful. That's basically what we're doing with our breedings right now. So I have a dog that's a lemonade and which is cookie. And we're going to be taking her to Crossbones, who is more lemons. So yes, I am gonna get a stronger lemonade, but the reason why I'm doing that is because, and it's also a line breeding. So she is a Crossbones granddaughter. So I'm taking the lemons to the lemonade because of the fact that I plan on doing some outcrosses after that. So now I'm gonna be adding in water and I don't know what that's gonna do. So I need to make sure the blood is tight and strong in its characteristics. So I know that any changes that I get out of my litters is because of the water. Whether it's good or for bad, I know where that came from. It wasn't from my blood. It wasn't from outcrosses in my blood because my blood is all gonna be already bred tight. So anyway, guys, <laughs> I hope this information was helpful. I hope it was useful. And I'll see you guys on the next episode of British Hacks. All right, guys.